Want to create awesome logos like this? In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate my super simple prompt formula for generating amazing logos in any style that you desire. Let's get into it. So I like to break down my logo design prompts into four different uh, main parts. Logo type, subject, style, and exclusion. Of course, there are more parameters and descriptors that you can add or some that you don't need to necessarily add, but I have found that I get the best results when I include at least these four things. All right, so our first prompt, a simple logo for a coffee brand, simple vector, no shading detail. Uh, so the main thing here to pay attention to is the term simple. And here is what we got. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what happens when we change it from simple to emblem. And as you can see here, we get four different emblem styled logos with a bit more detail than just uh, the simple logo type. Now let's go ahead and change that to mascot logo. And as you can see here, we get four cute little images in a completely different style, just changing one word. Of course, our logos are gonna be made up of multiple elements, but you could see how just changing one variable of the logo can make drastic differences. All right, moving on from logo type, let's go over artistic style. So here I'm going to start with a prompt slash imagine a simple logo for a chocolate bar brand, simple vector, psychedelic art, no shading detail. All right, and here you can see we got our four designs and I mean, they look stunning. You could see how it's taken aspects from the psychedelic art term, uh, vibrant colors, dreamlike quality, if we change the artistic style from psychedelic art to pop art, we get these four images for our logos. A much different output just from changing one variable. Now let's try out abstract style. And I really like these images, especially the bottom left. Super cool, super unique, and would really fit great on a logo for a chocolate bar. Another cool thing is if you have the specific name for a designer that you particularly like, you can add it to your prompt. So here we're going to put slash imagine a simple logo of an elephant head, flat, minimal, vector, by Paul Rand. And Paul Rand is a super famous logo designer. He designed logos like the IBM logo. And here we go. It takes that into consideration and provides four unique prompts. Once again, I particularly like this one in the top right. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a logo designer, it can be an, a famous artist as well. Another awesome thing to take advantage of is adding artistic technique into our prompt. So for this example, I'm gonna do slash imagine a simple logo of a diamond line, flat vector, no realistic photo details. So line here would be the technique that we're gonna do. And here you can see, we have four different diamonds and they have the feature of line design. If we change the artistic technique from line to gradient, we get these four logos. And as you can see, the stark contrast, you get a bit more dimension in these images and man, they look really good. So I believe that the best way to reach the desired outcome of a logo is to just be really familiar with all the different terms, the logo types, anything in any way to describe what exactly you are looking for because mid-journey will be familiar with it as well and it will give you the better result that way and just to touch upon it in all of these examples i have used exclusions and that the way you do that is you just do double dash and no whatever you don't want so that could be shading detail which would add 3d dimension and maybe you want a flat logo and this is really effective. But one thing people do that I actually think doesn't work too well is putting no text. Because if you're trying to create a emblem logo, for example, it needs to have text in order to produce an appropriate logo. Now, the way you would get rid of text is by hopping over in Canva and removing it that way. All right, so let's go ahead and try that out. I'm gonna to go to Mid Journey and download the image that I wanna turn into a logo. Go over here, create a design and custom size. We're gonna do 1000 by 1000 pixels just to get a perfect square for our logo. Once that loads up, go ahead and drag your image into the box and size it up so that it fits. 
And first things first, we're going to want to find text that kind of fits the text that's already on there. Of course, you don't have to necessarily stick to the same text, but I like the way the text looks on this one. All right, and once you find the font that you are satisfied with, go ahead and select the color and select this eyedropper tool and you can hover right over the text of the original image and change it to the color. We're going to go ahead and do that. Select the eyedropper tool again for our other piece of text and there we go. Same exact color so it fits really nicely and naturally. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is head over to Elements, select the block, and go ahead and drag the block over the text and format it to cover it perfectly. And then go ahead and also use the eyedropper tool to change this to the same color as the background. Do that for whatever elements of the design you need to change the color of, and then drag your text into a way that fits nicely. And there you go, you have a logo design with your branding specifically. Alrighty, I hope this video helps you guys uh, generate the logo designs that you would like to generate. And um, there are other things to be aware of. Midjourney isn't perfect yet, but uh, I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it.